a seven time medalist, Olympic, Olympic medalist, <laughs> the most decorated uh, gymnast in U.S. Uh, in gymnastics, yes, right? Yes, in and, U.S. And history, that's right. <laughs> what an honor. Well, you're here, but we're, we want to talk a little bit about that with you. Obviously, that story's been told, but we want to reflect on it. But uh, being a mom for the yeah. second time around yes. and also a cancer survivor, which, whew, boy, there is the yin and yang right there, the, the good news and the bad news, and we're going to see how you manage to, to get through all of that. All right, so before, let's step back in time, if we will, take a look at a couple of photos. There's one that I want to show that is it's fantastic. It's with you and way all the medals. Back. Yeah, way, <laughs> way back in back. time. Look at that, how adorable oh. that is that? <laughs> just, that. I, you have them all stacked up there. Did you just, when you did that picture, go, na 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 <laughs> <laughs> what are you holding there? You've got three bronze, two silver, two gold. That's right. Gold are from 96 in mm -hmm. Atlanta, and the two silver, three bronze are from Barcelona. Um, yeah, in 92, long time ago. It's a long time ago. <laughs> you still what look you, the same, by the way. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you, how, where do you keep those? Uh, I don't know if I should tell you. No. Um, <laughs> in a shoebox you know, in the closet, no. <laughs> for the most part, in a safe deposit box, but I take sure. them out a lot more, because you know it's good for kids to see them and be inspired by them, so. Sure. So they've, they've, they've been bumped and bruised a little bit. <laughs> Moved around a little bit. So uh, what means the most to you? I mean, I would, I would assume the gold. It's tough, it's really? tough, because I, don't, I wouldn't have made it to the gold without the, the others. Really? Uh, so so they, they all build on each other. And, you know, I think that first medal that you win um, is, is so important because it just puts you on that path and you get that taste of it and you think, oh, I got a bronze. I, I'd really <laughs> like a gold. <laughs> so the bronze was the first. Bronze for team in 92. Yeah. yeah. So, and, you, so I just wanted to ask you, you're, how old is your, your, is it a son that you have or a daughter? I have a, I have a little boy right a now. Little boy, and how old is he? Three and a half. Oh, so he's too young really to understand or to know about the medals. Has yet, no right? clue, no clue. But he does know that when, you know, when I have to get him out and I'm like packing up or something, he will take the gold and he'll hand me the silver. Oh, good. So, sure. so he knows which he one is which. Well, you taught him to be number one then, <laughs> haven't you? You put him number one, although he'll be number two in a little bit because there's another one coming. Go back to 90, uh, go to Atlanta. 96 mm -hmm. for a second because that's where the two gold you know came from what's going through your mind because that was what the year you guys beat Russia yeah the got the team gold what Sorry. goes through your mind when you go out there to perform? We talked a little bit about the mind game that goes on. It, well, it's a huge mindset. Uh, that's that picture's from my Olympic um, beam routine where mm -hmm. I won gold. But you know, the team competition was so insane. I mean, I think we walked in that night to the Georgia Dome with 40,000 screaming, screaming people, and we just had this sense that. We, you know, we've trained so hard. This is our night, and, and we are not walking away without that gold medal. And um, and it was a true team effort, and it was just such a magical night. But I think still, even then, we didn't realize the history we'd made. I mean, it took ten, um, almost twenty years now, <laughs> to to really understand um, what what happened that night. Yeah. Do you do you now have a though. good place in your mind of where that rests in history? Um, I think so. Uh, you know, I, I learn it again every time. Every time someone comes up to me and says, you know what, I was here. Like they knew exactly where they were sitting or what they were doing when we won our gold medal. And um, you know, I think every time I hear the national anthem, you know, you're just, all those feelings come back. I mean, the pride and, and standing up there and winning a gold medal for your country, it's, it's so amazing. So you went through a very difficult time after this was over, and you had a child, and then what happened after you had your first baby? Uh, explain to everyone what happened in your, right. your journey. Yeah, you know, hi to my career, and then I finished school, I got married, had a baby, everything was going great, launched a company, and um, then I found out I had cancer. Was it a, an exam? Did you want to have another baby and then find out? How did you find out? Take us back to that day. That's right. It was um, December of 2010. And um, here I had just five weeks before, I had just gone to a kind of a post-baby exam. So I had another one coming up. My husband and I had decided, all right, we're ready for baby number two. So and you go in, you get prepped, you get the prenatal vitamins and this and that, and all checked out. And I almost canceled that exam. And um, I didn't. I ended up going. And they found a baseball-sized cyst on my left ovary. That's pretty big. It's, yeah. I, it's shocking. I think that was the most shocking part for me, is how do you have something like that inside you? Here I had been in control of my body for how many years, you know, on the balance beam, knowing exactly what it was doing and where it was going, and um, and all of a sudden to just be so sidetracked. And you ask yourself, well, you know, what did I do wrong? And, and the answer is you, you don't necessarily do anything wrong. Sometimes it just happens but and you Shin, deal with it. But Shannon, here you are, a world champion in gymnastics, and as you said, you were in command of your body. 
and this news comes to you. As an athlete, do you stand up and go, let's fight this? Did you crumble? What happened when you get that news? You know, at first, you know, at first was just, I was shocked. What does this mean? They didn't say right away, you know, this is cancer. It's not, we didn't learn that it was cancer for, for about a month. Um, so for me, it was, okay, let's just do all the tests and make sure we stay on top of it. Let's be aggressive. Um, and then when I sat in the oncologist's office and he said, look, it's a mass. It's not going anywhere on its own. We have to take it out and find out if it is cancer. Then you start to switch into battle mode and competitive mode. And okay, we're gonna fight this and we're gonna be aggressive and we're gonna do whatever it takes and I'm gonna be here for my son. And that's yeah. just how it is. What yeah. stage cancer was it? I was very early. I was stage one, okay. um, which they were shocked and amazed. Um, and I just, <laughs> there's, there's a little Look boy. That. Oh, was yes. that, a, you're, you lost your hair through the, through the treatments, right? I did, yep. Um, surgery and then chemotherapy. My son was 15 months old when I was going through treatment. And I was terrified of what he would think of bald mommy. What did he that. say? Did he have a reaction? He really didn't. Um, I, I had to get used to it myself before I kind of introduced it to him. And then he kind of gave me this look like, all right, so you're curly one day, straight the next, bald, could you just yeah. make up your mind? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and actually um, just the other day, he was looking at some old photos and, um, and he said, mommy and Rocco, and he said, when I was a baby, you had no hair. Ah. <laughs> he remembers. Oh. Yeah, oh, that's he right. Remembers. And did yeah. you tell him he didn't either? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when he was a baby. I just wanted to relate to you so, <laughs> exactly. so much better. So how did this process go for you? Because you get cancer, there's a lot of process, you know, there's a lot that you have to go through. How long was it and when did you get the news, the good news? Uh, well, there was good news kind of along the way. Um, after surgery, yes, it was a malignant cancer. Um, I was very fortunate in that they didn't have to do a hysterectomy. Um, they did remove my left tube and ovary. I went through chemotherapy, and um, and then that summer I was declared cancer free. So um, in, in that stage, it kind of went pretty fast, which sure. was very good. Were you able to conceive naturally, or did you have to have help? Um, we were very lucky. We, we were told we had to wait a year. They want mm -hmm. your body to heal, um, everything to kind of get back, and then we were um, allowed to try in August of 2012, and then we got pregnant naturally about a month later. So we <laughs> we feel very blessed.